Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha. This is Akain Ephraim coming to you again with the next chapter out of the second scroll of Shemuel. <clears throat> it's been a while. We were out at Sukkot um, and just had an a, a awesome time with the Most High, with the Mishpacha. It was so good that I didn't want to come home, but here we are. And uh, I'll be posting some of those videos. I think I may have posted one before this one. Um, but it will be posting those some of those Sukkot videos where we had some other speakers as well as myself And I hope that they all are a blessing to you and uh, so look out for them uh, Thank you for everyone who uh, has been praying and uh, supporting the ministry I really appreciate it for those people who are liking and, and, and subscribing and, sh and sharing the videos um, This is a delight to me just because it's getting that word out. Uh, I, I know that thousands of mores that are out there, thousands of teachers and, 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 and pastors and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But when you say, you know, hey, share this video from Ephraim, it means a lot to me because in the midst of those thousands, somebody thought enough of, the most high was able to touch someone's heart. When I say heart, I don't mean the, the pump or the valve in your chest. I mean their, their heart, their, their thoughts in a way that said, this may be worthy for someone else to check it out. That's, just, that's really a blessing to me. All right, so <clears throat> before we get into before we get into the next chapter, which I believe is chapter fifteen, uh, I want to take a little bit of a detour. So walk with me to Mishli or the Book of Proverbs. I'm going to read from chapter six, and I'm starting down in in verse number twenty three. Let's start at verse 20. Um, it could start a little bit earlier, but, but, but let's do it. Let's do 16 just for the heck of it. These six matters Yahuwah hates, and <clears throat> seven are abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands shedding innocent blood, the heart devising wicked schemes, feet quick to run the evil, a false witness bearing out lies, and one who causes strife among brothers. My son, watch over your father's command and do not forsake the Torah of your email, your mother. So let's, let's stop here at 19. <clears throat> and without knowing it, you know, I backed up to the right place because these things are the seeds of all manner of trouble and mischief in the kingdom, in the earth, in the heavens. The, the, these things are, 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 are the elements that pick away at the mortar uh, in between the bricks that build up the kingdom of Elohim. And so after he says, you know, don't forsake your father's command, you know, your father and your ima are one thing, but we're talking about your father in Shemayim or your father in heaven. We're, we're talking about his commands. <clears throat> Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you are walking about, it leads you. When you lie down, it guards you. And when you have woken up, it talks to you. Hold up. <laughs> so, so, so he's talking about this lively interaction with the Torah, or this lively interaction with the Torah of Elohim. And if you remember, I, I, I reminded us earlier that every king had to write out, hand write out. There was no Xeroxing. There was no fax machines. There was no... Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Prenti or whatever to send it to, they had to write out the Torah themselves with their own hand. Then they had to study it and read it. And the reason was because this was this was the reason. Because when you're woken up, it's talking to you. When you lie down, it guards you. And, 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 and every flavor of leadership requires such, such a guard. In fact, the word guardian reminds me of how much to be a guardian, you have to be guarded. Because who wants a sloppy, lazy, jive time guardian who won't take care of the things? And basically, I'm on my own if you're my guardian like that. And so the guardian has got to have the discipline himself or herself in order to be able to effectively be a guardian. So blow that up a, a thousand times. How can a king not be on guard? All right.
When you lie down, it guards you, and when you have woken up, it talks to you. For the command is a lamp, and the Torah a light, and reproofs of discipline a way of life. I love that because, as I've said so many times, people don't like repenting, people don't like being rebuked, people don't like being chastised, people don't like being checked. People just want to be like free agents. They just want they just want to be like you know what do they call it, uh, free range chickens. And, 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 and while that might be okay for chickens, we see at the book of Shokotim, at the end of the book, that, that every, there was no king and everyone was doing what was right in his own eyes. That is not a good statement. So think about it and think about the lack of cohesion that we have between believers. Think, think about it and think on the other side of how awesome we would be if we could find those places to agree. If the Most High used, you know, his Talmudim that he became his emissaries, his, his uh, uh, apostles, to, to turn the world upside down, what could the millions, thousands and millions of us that really love the Most High, that really and truly are born again, that really and truly have found the Most High uh, honorable in our own lives, what if we would find the agreement there to work against the wiles of the devil. I mean, in some ways, it's almost as if that happened. I'm not sure if Mashiach would have to come back for a battle because we'd already have fought it. So let's watch and wait. I mean, all right, so I'm not even to the point. Now, verse number 24 is where I really wanted to go in terms of the context of what we're going to read today. <clears throat> to guard against an evil woman from the flattering tongue of a strange woman. Do not desire her prettiness in your heart, neither let her captivate you with her eyelids. Now, I'll pause for a minute. Before I go to the next verse, I wanna make it clear for anyone who hasn't watched the previous videos that we've already been through that scenario about the character that we can discern from and the judgment of character that we can discern from the scriptures of Bathsheba. We don't know her to be a wild woman. We don't know her to be up to no good. We don't know any about her enough to make any kind of condemnation upon her to call her a whore. I, I guess laying with a man that you married is kind of the definition of whoring, but we don't know the circumstances. We don't know all of the gnarly details that happened in the middle there. And so, and so when I read this, I'm not so much talking about her as I am focusing upon Dawid. And this will make a lot of sense in a couple minutes because Dawid had this momentary lapse. And this moment turned into a, a longer period, into a longer period. And all of this uh, uh, devising wickedness, wicked schemes out of verse 18 start to come. Feet run into evil, start to manifest. False witnesses, he's lying about this. All of this stuff start to, to just pour out, pour out. Or maybe it was pouring in, pouring in, like something demonic. I don't know which way it was going. But the, the very nature of this kind of sin, and in fact, most sin, is that it's looking for a crack in the armor. It's looking for that time when you sleep and not awake. And I'm not talking about, you know, getting some Z's at night, getting your eight hours or whatever the case is. I'm talking about when we're not alert, when we're not sober, when we're not circumspect, when we're not walking the line out intentionally to serve the Most High and to guard ourselves from evil. Do not desire her prettiness in, her, in your heart, neither let her captivate you in her, with her eyes, eyelids. For because of a whore, one is brought to a crust of bread, and an adulteress hunts precious life. Now, whether she was the adulteress that was working on him, which we have no evidence of, go back to the video back in chapter 11 or whenever that was, and listen to what I had to say about it. But it doesn't matter who was the initiator in terms of what the results are. So, Hunts for precious life. Dawid's precious life is, is on the block. 
the enemy's the enemy's looking to bring down the king because when you bring down the king, how can the kingdom stand? This is why Yahusha was without sin. This is why he he was tempted in all things, but he committed none of them because he as the king had to toe the line. Think about that at home. Think about that uh, 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 in the environment that you're in with whoever the teachers are that you listen to. Think about that because because if they're not towing as 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 well as they can toe the line is as well as they can hold the fabric of that assembly together and and I'm not talking about phony haughty proud prideful arrogant type of leadership I'm talking about genuine leadership that that's uh, able to flee from keep themselves from all manner of wickedness Would a man take fire to his bosom and his garments not be burned? Would a man walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorched? So is he who goes into his neighbor's wife. We thought we did that. None who touches her go unpunished. We, we give these Proverbs uh, credit uh, to Shlomo. <laughs> I think that's really interesting because Shlomo is, is the offspring of David and Bathsheba that survived. And here, here he is writing, throwing down this, 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 this straight, straight, straight talk about the nature of adultery. They do not despise a thief if, it's st if he steals to satisfy his appetite when he's starving. Yet he, if he's caught, he repays sevenfold. He gives all the wealth of his house. Now remember the scenario Nathan brought to David. He says, you know, uh, this is cat. He got all these sheep. And yet he go take somebody else's sheep. So David was not starving. He, he does not fit the starving scenario. He who commits adultery with a woman lacks heart. He who does it destroys his own life. He finds smiting and shame and his reproach is not wiped away. Ends this chapter with jealousy and rage is a man and he does not spare in the day of vengeance. Now he took care of that by killing Uriah. He didn't have to worry about what his intention was. He does not regard any ransom, nor accept your bribe, however great. In other words, if Uriah had got, got wind of this, there's a good chance that he would have wanted some sort of vengeance, and rightfully so. But look at here. He finds a smiting and shame and his reproach is not wiped away. I, I want us to kind of concentrate on that for a minute because that sounds pretty finite. It sounds, um, it sounds pretty serious. And for anyone who's ever done an egregious sin before the Most High, me included, so hey, don't 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 feel that bad. Be convicted, repent, and move on. But but the moving on is difficult when you do certain kinds of things. There's a better, better said. There's a specific challenge when when you bound yourself to wickedness when you know better. When you've written out the Torah, when you've taught each uh, other folk the fear of Yahuwah, and then you decide that giving this one little thing a crack, an opportunity, is acceptable. Basically, you are agreeing with the enemy. You agree with the devil. And when you've done that, then this all manner of stuff that comes in and then all those things, those lists back from the six matters start to take hold, put in place that like, you know, oh, oh boy, now I can do this. Now I can start them lying now because you don't want anybody to find out because if anybody finds out, they won't respect you anymore. So now your respect is phony and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you just created a, a, a real dramatic situation. And it says here that the reproach, his reproach is not wiped away. Oh, but the blood of Messiah, Yahushua, hallelujah. See, so, so, so genuine, genuine repentance and, and the favor of the Most High is, is, is able to keep you walking forward. And, and, and so what if, what if maybe now you can only reach nine and a half instead of that 10 that you had before? then you walk that nine and a half out like nobody's business. So, so what I'm doing now is I'm trying to encourage you. 
because I want you to understand that the other way around is to give yourself completely to the enemy, to give up and to say, look, he, I'm a soldier and I'm out in the battlefield. And, and, and here's the story. I did something crazy and my, my finger got blown off. And now, even though I've got a gun right here and even though I've got a bazooka right there, I can't shoot them at the enemy anymore. I can't, I can't cover my brethren while they're out in the field. I can't do anything. I'm just useless. So, so now the enemy is one, but the only thing's missing is the finger. And so everywhere you go, right, in the natural, they can see your finger is missing. That's that reproach that does not leave you. But that doesn't stop you from losing, using all of your other hand, using your feet, using your mind. You get the picture? What I'm saying is that, yeah, you jacked it up. And, and this is what Dawid is at. Yeah, Dawid. Melech, da, da, Dawid, you have jacked it up. But the thing not to do is to roll over and act like you're useless anymore. That is such a, an incredible challenge because of so many factors in terms of how folks see you, how you see you, how you think the Most High sees you. You know, the, the, the truth is, is that, that oftentimes repentance, if it's quick, if the books are kept short, if, if you don't linger in a thing any longer than you have to. In other words, once I'm convicted, I repent it. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a miracle from the Most High because, because it allows you to go on and still be effective in the kingdom at some level instead of at no level. You following me? So for anybody who understands no, that's not the word. For anybody who, who, who that applies to, or they've seen others who that could apply to, then, then minister that to yourself. May, may the messengers of Yahuwah minister that to your being so that you can understand that even though you've got fingers missing, you can still do something for the kingdom and get up and do it. And, and, and it's like, I don't care if I don't get to sit at the right hand of Yahushua and the left hand. I don't care if I don't get that anymore, but I'm going to do whatever I can for the kingdom of Elohim because he's worthy even though I might not be. Hallelujah. All right. This is Dawid's setup. We know what he did. If you've been watching the last uh, a few chapters, we know what's happened so far. We know, you know, his son is dead, his daughter is ashamed. We, we know all of that. We know that, that Bathsheba's first son dies. We know the whole thing, Yedidiah is born and, and, and et cetera. We know all of that, right? And Absalom has been like, in, in, in what do you call it? I don't know. He was put out there. The word for it, I can't think of it. You know, kind of like Napoleon with the elbow. But at any rate, he's out there. And he gets back in. In the last verse of the last chapter, in fact, let's go there really quickly. The last verse of the last chapter, Absalom uh, forces a, a meeting with his father by burning down the field uh, of, of Joab. And verse 33 in chapter 14 says, Joab then went to the sovereign and informed him, and he called for Absalom. And he came to the sovereign and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the sovereign. Then the sovereign kissed Absalom. And so we see what looks like a reunion. I tell you, we need discernment in this day and age. Oh, we need discernment. We need compassion. We need, we need all the fruit and gifts of the spirit so that we can walk this thing out. Because Absalom just bowed himself to his father and kissed him. And, and, and so his father has embraced him and has what looks like reconciled this problem that they were having together. Before we open up the chapter, here's what. Let's take a quick, a quick sort of what if scenario or or. or an examination as best that we can see of what it's like for Absalom. Absalom has, oh, is aware of what his father did with Bathsheba. Absalom is aware, of course, of what uh, 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 Amnon, his brother, did to Tamar, his sister. Absalom is watching and he's thinking, maybe something like this. 
Abby, you're not gonna do anything about it? I'm not your oldest. He's the one, he's the one that should be the beginning of your strength. He should be the righteous one. And he did what he did to his own sister, and you did nothing. And it's like, and by the way, you killed Uriah the Hittite and took his woman. And, and Absalom has got all of these seeds of thought that could very well be causing him to lose respect for his father. So anytime that leadership goes astray like this, it's going to cause a cascade effect in the hearts of those people who were being led by him. Think, think about it. Think about any ministry where, you know, the leadership fell or did some crazy thing. And then all of you, you smite the shepherd and what? The sheep are scattered. And so now Absalom still knows the king is, is, is Avi. And, 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 and so the king still knows that these are his Yaladim, his children. But, but, but there's something that's happened in the spirit realm, in the psychological realm, that's causing Absalom to lose respect for him. And so Absalom does what he does, and then he runs, and he's, he's hiding, right? And, 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 and he, can't, he can't come home, um, and he hasn't talked to, we don't see him talking to his Abby about it and saying that I had to do something. I, can't, I mean, I couldn't let this go, and we don't see any of that. But what we don't see also is that he's standing up and saying, my son, my son. It's a hard matter to deal with. And in the midst of my issues, I, I let it slip and slide for two years. I'm not approving what you did, but I truly understand. Come, come, son of mine. <laughs> come and pray with me that the Most High will rectify our relationship, that the Most High will, will, will clear my heart so that I may walk in the kingship, even if I've got three fingers missing, my, my reproach from Michelle, even if I've got three fingers missing, missing, that I might be the king that the Most High wanted me to be at whatever level I can manage to muster now. Because Yahuwah is worthy in the kingdom, hallelujah, is, is, is his representation on earth. And I'm not giving on, on that, up on that because of my weakness, because of me making a stupid set of decisions. Do, do you see how I did that? So, so, so bring it home. <laughs> you bring it home. Because when you or I have made some whatever kind of decisions, and we find ourselves in a place where our confidence is so weak, it ain't over. It ain't over until it's over. If you start to confess that it's over, if you start to believe that it's over, then it's over, okay? But if you don't believe it's over, and if you believe in the power of Yahuwah, and if you believe that he's given windows of repentance, and if you take advantage of them, then hallelujah, you're going to find that he'll start you walking, and you will not even miss that 80%. Or even if you do, you can put it to the side. I'm not the 80%, but the 10% or the 20% that you lose. The reproach, I guess, is what I'm saying. And, and so the, the key here lays upon Dawid because no matter how you slice it, he is still the Mirak Yisrael. With that, let's open in prayer. Baruch Atah Yahuwah Elohim. For all of the words that you've written in your book and that you've spoken to your people. Oh, Abayal, whip us into shape, discipline us, and teach us like your children, like your sons, and like your daughters, Abayal. Lest we be thought or felt like we're, we're, we're bastards or, 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 or without a, a, a father. Deal with us where we are, Abayal. Train us up and build us because of whatever's coming, whatever's coming down the road, Abba, that we be prepared. That, that I mean, put us in boot camp if that's what's needed, Abba, El, so that when the war is raging, that we'll know how to do the things that we need to do in order to watch and wait until you send Mashiach. And we bless you for this in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. Hallelujah and Amen. All right. Second Shemuel, chapter 15, and it came to be after this that Absalom prepared a chariot and horses for himself and 50 men to run before him. And Absalom used to
to rise, you used to rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. In other words, that gate where the people were coming in and out of the city, where folk would do judgments, write rulings, and help people out in terms of, hey, which way are you going to give direction, whether it was natural, uh, like how you get over to that store or whatever, or where that carpenter is at, or whatever the case is. All of this kind of activity is happening near the gate. And Absalom used to rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. And it came to be, whenever anyone who had a complaint came to the sovereign for right ruling, that Absalom would call to him and say, what city are you from? And when he said, your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel, Absalom would say to him, look, your matters are good and right, but you have nobody from the sovereign to hear you. And so Absalom is playing this political game. And so, and so even in these first few verses, we see that that whole falling on the neck and kissing thing hasn't resolved the problem. But let us not forget that this problem, this problem that's hovering over Dawi's family is from Yahuwah. And, and so <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you can do all the right things, but, but the most high, like when the uh, first son of Bathsheba died, you know, w w w remember what David said? He says, while he was alive, you know, I fasted, I prayed, I put on sackcloth and dust upon my head because while he was alive, the Most High may have had mercy, but he didn't have mercy and he killed that boy. And so, and so the sickness that the youngster had was from Yahuwah and the unto death was from Yahuwah. But in the meantime, David was trying to do the right thing. He was able to muster up uh, some semblance of, of, of what the right thing was and walk it out. And so, and so what I'm saying there here, what I'm saying that for is to bring the comparison into what's happening here where it doesn't seem like he's got that anymore. It doesn't seem like it's operating right now. How about that? All right. And Absalom would say, oh, that I were made a shofet or judge in the land and everyone who has any complaint or case will come to me and I shall let right be done to him. And so he's taking advantage of this vacuum that, that, if I can say it this way, poor old Dawid is created because some of his fingers are blowing off. He's taking advantage, I hope y'all getting this, I hope you're following me. What I'm saying is that that reproach that we saw in Mishli chapter six has disabled, handicapped, pushed Dawid back to this place where he's relying on his weakness instead of the strength of the most high even though he spent all his days walking in the strength of the Most High, even though he gave esteem and honor to the Most High for lions and bears and Goliath and every kind of thing that came his way and hundreds of Philistine foreskins and all of that wiped out in his mind, at least temporarily. This is the power of sin because it'll rob you of your faith. It'll snatch away from you the ability to believe that Yahuwah is who he is. And so that's, if you think about it, adding sin unto sin, because there's no way Yahuwah is not who he is. But now you don't believe it. And you say, well, I do believe. But do you believe it in an effectual way that would cause you to be able to walk up to that lion and that bear and to Goliath with only a sling and some stones and bring him down? That's the kind of faith that we're, we're talking about. That I'm not, I'm not just saying, oh, I believe, because you remember in the book of Shah, one of those letters, it says, it says that even the devils know that he is. So, so the nature of sin, though it may be multifaceted, in this situation, what we see is that sin has robbed them of his belief. He's thinking it's about him now. And the funny, the wicked, terrible thing about it is the reason he got in the sin was because it was about him now. So do we see how important it is for us to not walk in this about me now all the time? Oh yeah, this, sometimes it is about you, right? I get it. Hey, somebody's coming on a 18-wheeler about to drive right down your, your, your front, the front uh, 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 tires on your, on your car and you're inside of it. It's about you. Get out the way. I get it. But when it comes to the kingdom 
we need to understand that there is not the room to be selfish and to be thinking about me only because you're going to hurt somebody and you're going to, depending on where you are in the hierarchies, hierarchy, you're going to actually give place to the enemy to cascade that problem. And that's what's happening here. It came to be in verse 5, whenever anyone came near to him, near him to bow down to him, <clears throat> that he would put out his hand and take a hold of him and kiss him. So Absalom's pouring it on, you know, shaking his hand, kissing babies. And Absalom did this to all of Israel who came to the sovereign for right ruling. So they've come to talk to Dawi, but he's intercepting it. And Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And it came to be at the end of 40 years, difficult, difficult, difficult. Do, 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 do. Sounds like he's doing this for 40 years. I don't think that's the case. In fact, I'm sure it's not the case. So what is this 40 years? I'm not absolutely sure. I did a little research. You know, some people think it's the 40 years that that, that between, you know, when the quote unquote king, dumb man kingdom thing started back with Shaul all the way up until now. Some people think another thing and another thing. I don't know, but it wasn't he was doing this for 40 years, y'all. And it came to be at the end of 40 years that Absalom said to the sovereign, please let me go to Hebron and pay the vow which I vowed to Yahuwah. For your servant vowed a vow while I dwelt in Geshur in Aram, saying, if Yahuwah indeed bring me back to Yerushalayim, then I shall serve Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if he made that vow or not, but, but he's, he's up to something. And the sovereign said to him, go and shalom. And he rose up and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the voice of the shofar, then you shall say, Absalom is sovereign in Hebron. So remember, David was king in Hebron before now. And now Absalom's gone to Hebron in order to usurp authority here. And the strange thing that 97% of people don't get is that in a real way, Absalom was king. For a minute. And with Absalom went 200 men from Yerushalayim who we were invited, and they went along unsuspectingly and did not know the matter at all. They didn't know what he was up to. And Absalom also sent for Ahithophel, the Gileonite, that was the counselor of Dawid, from his city, from Giloa, <coughs> Gilo, sorry, while he slaughtered slaughterings. And it came to be that the conspiracy became potent for the people with Absalom kept increasing. In other words, people were coming to him, coming to him. See, in this vacuum while, while David is sleeping, while he's resting, while he's like trying to figure his life out. The people, the kingdom is being sucked away from him. And so this is, again, a witness of how you don't want to give up. Because when you give up, then that vacuum that's created is going to be filled, y'all. Then a messenger came to Dawid saying, the hearts of the men of Yisrael are with Absalom. And Dawid said to all his servants who, who were with him at Yerushalayim, rise up, let us flee, for none of us shall escape from Absalom. I guess he knows that Absalom can be treacherous because of what he did to, we know him because he grew him up probably, but he know him also because of what he did to uh, uh, Amnon and, and on the on the, on the down low, just kind of like acting like things were good, just kissed me a month, a week ago, or whatever. Uh, and now he's gonna kill me. Go in haste, lest the, he overtake us quickly and bring evil upon us and strike us, strike the city with the edge of the sword. And the sovereign servant said to the sovereign, Look, your servant shall do according to all my master the sovereign chooses. And the sovereign went out and all his household at his feet. But the sovereign left ten women, concubines to look after the house. So the sovereign went out and all the people at his feet and they stood still at the last house and all the servants were passing on his on at his side and all the Kerithites, the Pelethites, the Gittites, 600 men who had followed him from God. You remember those 600? At one point, you know, four of them, 100 of them went and got the women and the stuff back that had been stolen and two of them had to stay behind with the baggage. Uh, those 600, they're still hanging out with Dawid. Um, 
were passing before the on before the sovereign, and the sovereign said to the Yatida Gittite, "Why do you go? You also with us. Turn back and remain with the with the sovereign." What does he mean? Turn back and why do you go? Turn back and remain with the sovereign, for you are a foreigner and also an exile from your own place. You came yesterday, and should I today make you wander up and down with us? So, okay, since he's leaving, he's saying, hang back with the sovereign. What is he saying? Is he calling Absalom the sovereign? You came yesterday, and should I today make you wander up and down with us when I'm going wherever I'm going? Return and take your brothers back. Loving commitment and truth be with you. In other words, stay back, bro. It's all good. And Itai answered the sovereign and said, as Yahuwah lives, as my master the sovereign lives, in what place my master the sovereign is, whether in death or life, let your servant be also be there. So this man is dedicated to Dawid. Therefore, Dawid said to Itai, go and pass over. And Itai to get tight and all his men and all the little ones who were with him passed over. And all the land was weeping with a loud voice and all the people were passing over and the sovereign himself was passing over the Wadi Kidron. And all the people were passing over toward the way of the wilderness. And see, Zadok, remember him? The priest also came and all the Levites with him bearing the Ark of the Covenant of Elohim. So, so th this civil war kind of thing is, 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 is what's happening and they're taking the Ark with them. And they, they set down the Ark by Ebitar. I'm sorry. And they set down the Ark of Elohim and Ebitar went up until all the people and completed passing over from the city. And the sovereign said to Zadar, take the Ark of Elohim back to the city. If I find favor in the eyes of Yahuwah, then he shall bring me back to show me both it and his dwelling. But if he says thus, I have not delighted in you, here I am. Let him do to me as, it, as seems good in his eyes. This is a spark of the old Dawid I know and love. <laughs> He, he, he's like, you know, put that, put that ark back, make it safe, take care of it because, because it represents the most high himself between the caribou. This is where he said he would come down and meet us. And, and so, and so he, he's, he's, he's got, he's got that, 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 uh, smoldering wick. Hallelujah. <laughs> that Mashiach said he didn't come to quench. He's, he's got that, that little spark that's in him. And that, and that old Dawid is somewhere inside. And this is what has happened to any and everyone who's been temporarily conquered by sin. If you really have the most high in you, if you really have that desire to, to love him and to walk for him and to give your whole life from him, then, then circumstances and situations that seem like they would overwhelm you, those are opportunities for you to stand up <laughs> and say what and what for Yahuwah's sake. I was thinking of a testimony, but it may be too crazy to tell right now. Take too long of my time. But all I want to say is that even in the midst of feeding the pigs, that, that one they call the prodigal son from the book of Luke, he had a, a flash of understanding that said to him, in my father's house, even the servants eat better than this. And so that was him honoring his father and then finding a way to get back home in a humble heart. And so, and so what, what, what I'm stretching this out for is because I want you to understand that that road, that, that, that window or door of repentance is often followed by a road that you walk down where you're going back, where to shoot, where you're re returning back. And you need to do that in humility. If I have not delighted in you, here I am. Let him do as, as seems good in his eyes. In other words, the most high, have your way in me. I, 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 I'm, I'm not able to protect myself against you. And, and, and in, in, in spirit and truth, I'm still sorrowful for what I did. 
And so I'm throwing, I'm throwing myself on the mercy of the court, saying, Abba, whatever you want to do here. And the sovereign said to Sadak the priest, are you not a seer? Return to the city in Shalom and your two sons with you, Achimaatz, your son, and Yohanatan, son of Ebeyatar. See, I'm waiting in the desert plains of the, of the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. And Sadak and Ebeyatar took the Ark of Elohim back to Yerushalayim and they remained there. And Dawid went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives and wept as he went up. Okay, okay, my man's coming back. <laughs> and wept as he went up and, and he had his head covered and went barefoot. And all the people who were with him covered their heads and went up weeping as they went up. And Dawid was informed saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And Dawid said, Ho oh, Yahuwah, I pray you make the counsel of Ahithophel foolish. I like this for a couple reasons. One is that, you know, again, he's calling on the most high. He's, 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 he's humbling himself and he has been humiliated, to be honest with you. That's, that's, that'll preach. So if we can humble ourselves, oftentimes it prevents us from being humiliated. Put, put that down as a sound bite. All right, so, but he's calling on the most high and what he does is something that I wanna uh, expose as a, a, a technique or whatever for you and for me. So he asked the Most High to make the counsel of his enemy foolish. We could do the same thing. Let, let's say you're in some kind of a jam with this, that, or the other, right? And, 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 and you don't know how you're going to get out of it. And they seem smarter and more strength and more power or whatever than you do. And they can come up with some stuff that could jack you up real bad. And so why not ask the Most High? Make loose foolishness upon them, Abba. Make the counsel of the bop fill in the gap foolishness. Now, you may have a difficult time doing this if you're absolutely wrong and you did whatever they're after you about, right? But if there's any room for this kind of a statement or this kind of a prayer, then use this set of part ones. Remember that, that the Most High, He loves you. If you remember what I read a few weeks ago out of uh, uh, um, Yasher, that He's exceedingly fond of you. And even in your mess, He want to bless you out of it. And it came to be that Dawid came to the summit where he bowed himself before Elohim and <clears throat> saw Husha the archite coming to meet him with his robe torn and dust on his head. And Dawid said to him, if you pass on with me, then you shall become a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I'm your servant, O sovereign. See, again, he's calling Absalom the sovereign. I'm your servant, O sovereign. See, there's been a change of the guard here. And we're not supposed to already know what's going to happen in the next chapters. But right now, Absalom is walking in, in a position that's kingly. People have come to him. He's, he's, he's wooed the people. And the message is back. You know, if you think everybody know, I mean, it was on the daily news. He took Bathsheba, blah, 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 blah. They say it was because of this, that, and the other. I think that's what happened to Uriah the Hittite. He did da 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 Don't you know this was all over the place? Don't, don't you know that your bungling, your, 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 your tangling with sins is, is going to eventually find you out. It's going to eventually get out there. And then when it gets out there, the people are going to pelt you with, with all manner of verbal stones and verbal eye uh, uh, lids and et cetera. And, 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 and make you to feel like the nothing that you are. But thanks be to Yahuwah, oftentimes there's room for repentance. O oh, sovereign, once your father, <clears throat> once servant of your father, but now I'm your servant, then you shall nullify the counsel of Ahithophel for me. And are not Zadok and Abiatar the priests with you there? And it shall be that every matter you hear from the sovereign's house, you shall report to Zadok and Abiatar the priests. See, there with them are, are their two sons, Achimaat, Sadak's son, and Yohanatan, Eviatar's son. And by them you shall send me every matter you hear. Again, Dawid's starting to do his thing. He's like, 
He's got his little espionage going on. He's praying to the Most High. He's trying to order his steps and do things that are wise. And it's like, okay, I might be missing three fingers, but I'm going to do my best to try to navigate through this. And that's all I've been encouraging us and you, us and you to do as we go through challenges of life. And, and Shushai, Dawid's friend, went to the city and Absalom came into Yerushalayim. Now, that's the last verse in this chapter. But I want to say that um, while we were at Sukkot, I cut another video and it's about um, hypocrisy. And I want to post that up and I, and I want to encourage you all to check it out because it kind of digs into the, the it kind of uses some of the things from this, this story uh, and gives me an opportunity to talk about some things that I'm not talking about during the series. So uh, it was on the Shabbat during, uh, excuse me, it was on the Shabbat during uh, Sukkot. And I think the message was really a, a powerful one. I think it can really help us a, a great deal and uh, give us some practical uh, traction on the issues of life that we find ourselves facing. So until next time, uh, be walking in the light. Hallelujah. You won't stumble. <laughs> Blessed be the most high Elohim, Yahuwah, the great and mighty one, the El Gadol, the El Elyon, the one that has no beginning and no end. We thank you, Abba, for this day. Bless your people, Abba. Pour out your truth your ruach, break the yokes of bondage, tear down the strongholds operating in their lives, bring forth our by clarity of vision for them that they may know what you desire to do in their lives. Hallelujah and amen. Till next time, shalom, shalom.